The more straightforward we are in a kind approach, the better response we get. So Leslie, with a seller lead that came through, an older one, let's say six months ago, and for some reason we didn't reach out to them, I think being as straightforward as possible with a text or a call or an email is important. And saying something along the lines of, and this is what we do, um, you came in about six months ago, you were asking for the cash value of your home. Are you still interested? Did you end up selling your home? And that's it. And just let them talk. Nobody wants to be, nobody wants to be pressure sold or felt like they're talking to somebody too slick, like a car, a, a used car salesperson. Because the management and transparency is what's very important. So once you submit a referral, you're going to have your own home advantage account, and it's going to tell you where everything sits. So if you have 10 referrals that you've sent into the network, it's going to give you all 10 referrals. It's going to tell you every milestone that that client is sitting in, whether they're touring homes, whether they're in escrow. And you now can manage through the Home Advantage application as far as what your pipeline looks like for the referrals that you've sent. And so it's pretty sophisticated uh, and it's, it's all click of a button, guys. Let's talk about, are you the reason your leads are not converting? The answer is yes, you know, I am the reason. I am the reason they're not converting. I am the reason they are converting. So it's up to me, really. Um, Absolutely. Um, what I kind of want to talk about is how do you determine if you are the reason? Because a lot of people are in denial. It's easier to blame the lead company. It's easier to say these leads are crap. I don't want them. These leads suck. You know, oh, they won't answer my phone. So it's really easy to say, you know what, it's the lead. It's not a hot lead. They're not interested. They don't want to talk to me. Um, but is that the right train of thought here? I think at times, absolutely, we can say, yes, that was a bad lead. But how do we determine, was this a bad lead or am I just bad at converting leads? And what steps do I need to look at, evaluate what I'm doing to determine if I'm the problem? And if you are the problem, how do you fix it? How do you overcome it? What steps can you take, can you put in place to correct that? Yeah, those are all good questions, man. I think uh, where I would start, because J I know Jake's on, on in the background, but where I would start is probably on how are you feeling today? Because a lot of that, a lot of that translates into the type of calls you're going to be having. A lot of that translates into the conversations that you're having. I mean, not only with your, not only with your online leads, but also with those leads that you're meeting with clients that you already have past client past clients sphere uh online leads on social media everywhere and the challenge is that some of us don't always feel the greatest and that that energy and that message is being is being really given to to the client so uh, for example jordan and, and i think we said this in one of our last calls but if i'm calling on a lead that just came through for z buyer Yep. And, and I jump on and, and they're like, yeah, I just wanted to see what I could get for my home. And I'm like, oh, well, you know what? I'm not sure. Let's get some more information. It's like, well, look, look right now. I just, I'm just looking. It's like, oh, you're just looking. Well, here's what it is. Let me know if you have any questions later. And then you hang up. And then the next thing is, man, these Z buyer leads suck. Right. And in comparison to somebody who's calling in and saying, hey, look, how can I help you? Oh, you want to know your, you want to know the numbers? Hold on. Let me get that for you. By the way, here are your options. Uh, do you have any questions about this or that? This is what we can do for you. This is what we've done in the past. And then you go further with them rather than already thinking before you pick up the phone. Oh, another online lead that sucks. Yeah. Right. So it really depends all across the board how you're feeling and what you're thinking about. That's where I like to start, man. Yeah, absolutely. One thing that you said I like is, you know, how are you feeling today? One common theme I hear a lot, you know, from any high converter, someone who's good at converting online leads is they structure time in their day throughout their week, this time block, this 30 minutes, I need to spend calling leads. Um, but at the same time, people will say, if I'm not in a good headspace, if I'm too stressed, if I'm all over the place, I will reschedule that time. I'm not going to put myself in the position to jeopardize my time 
and jeopardize my calls and these leads that I've paid for and spent months potentially nurturing. I'm not going to jeopardize that because I'm in a bad mood or I'm in a bad headspace. I don't have the right energy. And being able to be self-aware and say, hey, look, now's not the time I need to be calling and representing myself as a brand and the professional that's going to help people, I'm going to wait. Yeah, that's that's it, man. That's it. But a lot of us are are not are not taking the time to reflect on how we're feeling. So I think that's this is where it starts. How are you feeling? Because it'll determine the conversations that you're having. And if it just means that you have to take a quick check on yourself and be like, God, I just need to take a deep breath. <sighs> okay, let's go. Let's do this, right? Or you need to pop up some music and be like, hey, Alexa, turn on the best music in the world. Alexa, don't do that. Alexa, stop. It already started flashing. Um. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Michael asked an interesting question. Are you talking about the cash offer? or just trying to get the appointment and list their house. Um, I, I think to answer that question, Michael, that, that's to anything, you know, whenever you're calling. But the next one, what is the best time to call? Um, I've got an opinion about that. I'd like to hear what your thoughts are too, Tristan. But my thought is the time where you will most consistently be there to make the calls. Don't set yourself up for failure by setting a time that you're going to call that you're not going to be present for, that you're not going to actually show to, because then you're not making the calls. You're behind in the calls. You're struggling to get to that time block in your day. So whatever time you are most available, the next thing I would say is look through your CRM. And this is another way where we can determine, are you the problem or is it your leads that are the problem? If you have your CRM set up how you should, you should be able to have some analytics and pull back some numbers. Look and see what time of day is your highest contact time. Work within that time zone, find the time you're available, and then determine when you're going to call. But what are your thoughts, Tristan? I like those, man. And I would say there are three, you have three slots to call to have better success. And I'd like to put them in this order, um, if, if possible, right? Number one, as soon as you get the lead, that would be when I would pick up the phone and either call them or text them, right? Depending on, on what you want. They're both great. Just the follow-up as soon as possible. That's number one. Number two would be, well, I would probably put them in, like Jordan said, at the specific time that you normally call. Because what will also happen is if you're calling as soon as every, and if you have thousands of leads coming in, as soon as the lead comes through, that's all you'll be doing the whole time, right? So if you have a set time to call from nine to 11, then call there. If it's from four to six for follow-up, then call there. Or from four to five or from six to seven, whatever you want to do. That would be number two. And number three is there have been some studies done as to the best times to call. Uh, on a business to business or business to personal to consumer. And that's typically in the later afternoon. So four to six, approximately four to six was the best time. And the secondary best time was from eight to nine. So that would be, that would be the three things ASAP as soon as possible. Number two, your set times to call and then the normal times that the surveys and studies have said, these are the best times to call. That's, that's how I would roll with it. Absolutely. <clears throat> Paul said something interesting. Uh, found that since the pandemic, value of time frames become less important. People work from home and with cell phones, people are available all the time. Um, and I definitely I agree with that to an extent, but I still feel that the best time to call is the time that you are going to routinely set aside to make those calls, holding yeah. yourself consistent um, and accountable for that, which takes me into kind of my next thought of determining, are you the reason your leads are not converting? Are you consistent with what you do? Are you consistent with your, whatever it is that you're communicating um, with your CRM? Are you consistent? Um, because if you're not, you can't measure true effectiveness of what you're doing. If it's different every single time, you can't look and say, out of 100 calls I made, I got X number of appointments, so my conversion percent is this. If you're using a totally different script and shooting from the hip every single time. You don't know what works and what doesn't work. Yeah, very true, man. Very true. Look, Paul says, same thing. 
Uh, you got a check up from the neck up from Zig Ziglar. So that's good. Um, so when it comes, Rich, Rich is specifically saying here, when it comes to the cash offers, is there, we have two different types of online leads that come through. We have Jordan, we have the cash offer one, and then we have the general online lead, right? Because you have those two different types. Correct. And then you can have buyer leads inside of there. Um, but it's typically a cash offer. If you're buying seller leads from Z buyer, that's the most common thing that you're going to see. Yeah, uh, that's very true. And, and Rich, to to tackle your question, I know other people have this one, so we'll go right into it. Um, Rich says, I have, I've had better luck not discussing the cash offer, but by telling them I am working on the valuation for you. And I have just a few questions to be more accurate. What is your best script? Good. We'll get on that one. I uh, just want to make sure. Hal says, will you all be doing some role playing? Yep, we will. Uh, Loretta, owning your schedule and discipline matter? A hundred percent. Do you do you have a smart plan recommended? Rich, we do. Uh, Jordan, I'll go to you on that. Do you guys have any smart plans that we, that they can plug in? as far as the follow-ups? So we have some good templates and some starting points. Now, the way that anyone can get to this, let me share my screen here. And then right after this, we'll go into the scripting because Jay has a question about that too. Yeah. Um, so what you want to do is if you're inside of your account, you can get through this through the website, through the app, uh, but you're going to hit this menu. You're going to go to Resource Center. And then here, we've got quite a bit. Um, we've got some follow-up plans built in. We've got a handful of different scripts in here, um, text scripts, call scripts, email scripts, common objections and rebuttals you're going to find with Z buyer leads. So this is a starting point. Um, now, we do this marketing all across the nation. We have thousands of agents using us. We don't want everyone to be able to just grab the same exact thing and everyone just throws the same cookie cutter responses into their system. So we leave it open and vague to where the agent has to come in and personalize this and make it their own to an extent. I like that. And where do people go and find that? So you're going to go to the website. Once you're mm -hmm. logged into your account, up at the top, that menu icon, you're going to click that. There's a tab that says Resource Center. Once you get in there, you'll be able to find quite a bit of information. Perfect. All right, dude, I like it. Let me just now open this up. Let's let's role play this thing. You ready? Yeah. All right, I'm going to go into my email and I just grabbed a random one here. Okay. Uh, but these these come in. This is a Z buyer. It's a buyer, right? Yep. Cuz we we get both buyers and the cash offer. So we'll do both. Uh this is a buyer Jim Mello curious about buying in Camarillo. Uh, think about buying Camarillo, this buyer expressed interest in finding a home. Before I go into it, Jordan, where do these buyers typically come from before they land in my inbox? So buyers are coming from our sister site. It's a nationwide IDX portal called Housing Now. Um, and this is something we launched early last year. And I'm proud to say we're still experimenting with many different avenues of how we're picking up the traffic on here. We have some okay. delete forms that are going to come on the site. So after a homeowner has clicked on X number of properties, we're going to pop up and ask them, would you like to speak with an agent about finding the right home? We've got forms embedded all throughout here. And the site is really a choose your own path type of site, depending on what they click on, how many times they engage. We're going to ask them different questions. Are you struggling to find the right home? Would you like to work with an agent to find the best one for you? We're going to ask them as they come in, is there a specific zip code that you're looking to purchase it? They tell us that information and say that they need an agent's help to find a home in that zip code. We'll get them. We also have people that are looking at specific properties saying, I'm interested in this exact home. Um, so we're still experimenting with what is the best way, what's the best route, and what are the highest converting leads that we can get from here. And we're constantly increasing. All right, good. Good. I like that. So now then they went there and they came to me. Exactly. And this specific, I'll go back to this one and I'm going to be calling Jim. So it'd be, uh, first, I want you to check yourself, right? If we're going to use Paul's quote that he used from Zig Ziglar, right? Check yourself. What was it? Check yourself from the neck up or something like that, which is great. That take a deep breath. 
before you call. Relax. And look, I, I, I telemarketed for years. So that's my background. Take a deep breath. Relax. All right. I'm going to call Jim. Let's see. Looking in Camarillo. This is all the info I've got. All right. Go. I'm going to call Jim. Jordan, you're Jim, okay? Okay. Ring, 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 ring. Hi. How can I help you? Hi, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. This is Jim. Hi, Jim. This is Tristan with eXp Realty here locally. How are you? I, I, I'm doing well. You, you said you're a, a realtor. Is that right? Yeah. Listen, you visited our website and it looks like you're looking for homes in Camarillo, but I don't want to send you stuff that you don't want to take a look at. Like, I don't want to spam you, but what are you looking for out here? Uh, you, you know, I, I've got to be honest, Tristan. I'm just kind of in the early stages looking for a home, not exactly sure. And I, I don't want to take up your time either. I, I don't know how soon I'm looking to make any decisions. All right. Awesome. Makes sense. Look, I'm always looking at homes. I was I was just sending a home to my wife in in Westlake, which isn't too far. I'm like, hey, Winnie, what do you think of this one? So I know you're just starting. I don't want to spam you. I want you to actually look at your email and be like, oh, this is nice. Tristan sent me something good. What are you looking for in Camarillo? It doesn't matter if it's a year out, two years out. I don't care. I just want to make it fun for you. You know, we're we're really looking to um, upgrade. We're we're in a nice home now, um, but I think we've got a good amount of equity and thinking about moving into something a little bit bigger, families growing and would like, you know, a couple extra bedrooms and a, a little bit of a bigger backyard. Nice. How'd you end up choosing Camarillo? Do you already live here? Or no? Yeah. Yeah. We live here already. We've been here All for right. seven, eight years now. Oh, nice. Are you in a, in a townhome or a condo? What does that look like? Yeah, we're, we're in a townhome currently. Nice. So you're looking to get into a house. Now, are you also open to adjacent cities like You've got Oxnard on one end and Newbury Park on the other. We, we really like to stay, um, you know, in the city. We, we've got kids that are in school currently, so we don't want to be changing their school district. So really like to stay where we are. Oh, got it. So you're you're in a specific radius. Got yeah. it. So uh, we want to be close to this school. What school is that? You could just give me whatever school name, dude. Uh, it, it's the Ozark School District. Oh, the Ozark School District. Yeah. Nice. I like that show, by the way. Uh, <laughs> all right so ozark school is let me let me make sure what we're sending you is is going to be for that school district so it's going to take a little bit of homework but I'll, i'm going to do two things for you jordan i know your your ways out i'm going to see what we can find that stays around the school district number one and number two is do you have an idea of a price point you know, I, I'm really not that sure yet. And I, my wife and I hadn't really decided what we what we were looking for. Okay. And as far do, you know as you, do you know if you need to sell in order to buy this next one? Or are you going to keep your home as a rental? No, we, we would like to go ahead and sell it. Got it. Got it. So then let's do this because we're not clear on price, but I can at least send you some things entry level housewise, maybe three, four bedrooms. I'll have I'll have our lender reach out to you so he can at least tell you, hey, looks like you can go up to this much or this. It doesn't matter if you're a year to two years out. At least we're clear on on your price points. I'll have him reach out to you today around five thirty or six. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I can think that work. And you know, Tristan, I I just want to be clear. You know, we're not looking to do anything right away. So I don't want to take up a bunch of your time, and I I don't want you on the fence. You know, thinking we're going to be moving anytime soon. Jordan, no, you're not taking my time. I, I do this for a living. Whether you end up buying or not, uh, you're going to end up meeting somebody. And you're like, you know what? That Tristan guy, he was so nice. He didn't pressure us into anything. I've got a real estate agent for you. That's what I'm going after, Jordan. doesn't matter if you end up buying or not. You may know people that, that you can send over our way, maybe in a year or two. So what I'll do is I'll connect you to our lender. I'll text both of you together. You guys can talk. And then we can come up with a price point. This way I don't send you things that just don't match what you're looking for. And then do me a favor, Jordan, if you like what I'm sending you, then text me back and be like, Tristan, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Keep on sending me these. But if I miss the mark, can you do me a favor, Jordan? Yeah, what, what's that? Also tell me, Tristan, this is <laughs> this is not what I'm looking for. All right? Sure, I, I, I'd say that's fair, Tristan. All right, and if your wife says, hey, um, this is not what we're looking for. Let me know as well, because I want to make sure that that we're sending her stuff that that she likes as well. And if she wants to be included in the emails, just send me over her email too. All right.
All right, Tristan, I'll send this thank over. Thank you very much for your time. I'll text you. Let me know what you think, man. Okay. All right. So right after that, we're done. And I didn't pressure them into buying anything. I don't want to meet them up. They're at the very beginning stages of, of this whole process. And a lot of the times what we do is we're looking at the very beginning. We're thinking, when can I close this person? When can I set up an appointment to meet them? Right. And those are all the wrong things you're supposed to be thinking. The only thing you want to establish is how can I create a relationship with this person long term to make him feel comfortable to keep, up, keep on coming back to my website instead of Zillow, Realtor.com, or Redfin? Because this is a long term game and I want to nurture them and make sure that I offer them value. And that's what I'm doing from the very beginning. Absolutely. Yeah. In, in a, a five minute conversation there, it's a mock call, but you pulled out so much more information than what came through. And it was just from simply reassuring you, you knew that I was, you know, a year, two years out and you were okay with that. You wanted to help me. You wanted to show me what I was interested in and you did it from a genuine place of, I'm just trying to help you. Yeah, that's it. And if we approach the same thing, because if we approach it in the same manner for the sellers that come in and they say, I want cash offer, yeah. we have an advantage, Jordan, because we actually do have a list of three investors that we work with very closely, which we've actually sold homes to all cash. And then they've come in and flipped them with us. Yeah. So one of them just happens to be the father of one of our agents too, picks up properties left and right. So it's a lot easier for us. So what I would recommend is, I, I always love to come in from the position that I'm, I'm telling the truth. I, I hate lying. So I know I, I've heard coming into real estate, I was like, yeah, just tell him you've got a buyer. I'm like, I, I don't know if I can do that. Right? right. So I had to find real investors that are willing to actually buy things. Once I felt comfortable enough with that, um, I, I then said, okay, guys, I, I get a lot of these quality people that are looking to possibly sell their homes. And so I, I want to understand as an investor, where are you coming in at? Are you coming in at 70% of market value? Or are you coming in at 65, 75? What does that look like? So when I'm talking to you, Jordan, and you come in as a seller lead, I, I, give, I give you the options and I just do it over the phone. And I say, hey, Jordan, thanks for reaching out. Look, I, I got your all cash offer. We've got options for you. We do have a list of three investors they typically come in and they want to buy cash, but they come in lower than market value. Do you know what you want to sell your home for? I just go right into it. Yeah. And then they say, well, we're looking. And then they tell me, and then this is what happens. They say, well, I need to sell my home now. I'm like, what's going on? And they say, well, I'm behind on my rent. I'm like, got it. At that point, like we need to just get rid of it as soon as possible, which by the way, Camarillo happened with one of our agents it ended up being a short sale. They thought it was a short sale, but they ended up pocketing $5,000 because we sold it on, on the market instead of selling it to an investor. So yeah. it, it comes, it just, it really comes down to how you communicate. There's a question here by uh, Shalmet Ray. This is Shalmet. Oh, Shalmet. There you go. And my question is, do you use these same scripts or tips for our prospecting lists, which may reference leads from September, 2022. Uh, no, the older leads, I do a little bit different. We have two things that we try out. One is if it's a buyer, we send out usually a text that, that says, and, and they have been unresponsive. Um, Michael says, Shaman in the house. Yes. Uh, if they've been unresponsive, we simply send out a text that says, hey, and I'm going to use your name, Jordan. Yep. Hey, Jordan, I'm not sure that you're around this weekend, but I've got a list of open houses that I can send your way. You want me to text that or email it to you? And that's it. And then they're usually, they usually say, text it. I say, awesome. Are you still looking for, and then I've got their stats. Let's say it was Jim. And I've got, you're still looking in Camarillo, right? And they'll be like, awesome. All right. I'll send them over to you. Uh, do you have a price limit? And then they'll be like, yeah, uh, 600,000. I said, awesome. As soon as I send it over, Jim, I'll call you and then we can go over the list. And that that's how easy that is. And people are like, why are you sending them open houses? First, I need them to respond back. So I know that they're real, right? Yep. The response back on that text is 
And remember, these are people who hadn't responded. So Shalmet, uh, if you haven't reached out to them or you have and they've been unresponsive, give them value first. What did they come in for? They came in looking for homes. Like when Jordan showed it on the website, they came in looking for houses, townhomes, condos. Give them exactly what they want. And then follow up and say, did I hit that target right? Or did I miss the mark? And then just shut up and listen. We've got another question in here from Kay. I have Z buyer. I have Lion Desk, which sends a response right away. Should I call them at the same time or wait for their response? Yeah, I would say call them at the same time. We have something very similar. And um, I would say it depends. Uh, it always depends on the person. If you call me and text me, I'm going to text you back. But if you call and text my wife, my wife will pick up the phone, right? So it really depends on how we communicate. I know that some people will say, well, it depends how they came in and communicated with you. But that that's that's not right either because they only had one option. It's like, click, they're, they're on their computer, yep. right? Most people are just going to go to the 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 easiest way to ask for any questions which is click on the damn button right so try them all try them all call text and email don't leave off email because we found that at a higher uh, job level executives uh, they typically respond to their emails above phone calls and texts yep um in the vast vast majority of these leads we're getting from an initial email to the homeowner. That's how we're starting the conversation. So we know they're open to receiving emails, open to looking, clicking links and emails. Dude, yes, exactly. And yes, this is recorded. Uh, it's going to go up on our YouTube channel for Lab Code Agents. I think Jake just put it up there. Awesome. And if you have any questions about Z Buyer, we've been using Z Buyer, dude. 10 plus years? I don't, yeah. You can check my, you, you know what you should do? You should. Jake said nine years, at least. All right. Yeah, for sure. At least nine years. Um, and we've, we've, uh, we love it. So uh, let me see. I know I missed another one. How do you handle older seller prospect leads? Uh, Leslie, I find that our audience in general, the consumer is now so jaded by being, being treated like they're they're ignorant and i because of that i find that the more straightforward we are in a kind approach the better response we get so leslie with a seller lead that came through an older one let's say six months ago and for some reason we didn't reach out to them i think being as straightforward as possible with a text or a call or an email is important and saying something along the lines of, and this is what we do. Um, you came in about six months ago. You were asking for the cash value of your home. Are you still interested? Did you end up selling your home? And that's it. And just let them talk. Nobody wants to be, nobody wants to be pressure sold or felt like they're talking to somebody too slick, like a car, an, a used car salesperson. Yeah. Right? Another approach um, that, that works well is saying, you know, hey, you came in about six months ago. Did you find a value or a number for your home then? What I'd like to do is send you what your home looked like six months ago and also show you some stats, what it looks like right now. It's a good one. So make a decision. Should you wait another six months or is now the time to make a move? Very good one, dude. Very good one. Um uh, the time frame for you mentioned eight to nine. Is that in the morning? Yes, that is in the morning. And you know what? While I'm answering that one, I'm just going to look up the quick study. I know that it's on Google. Um, I think it was a Harvard, Harvard study on calling B, B2B. I think that was the one. Uh, 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 cold calling might have been this one. Uh, you know what? When I find it, I'll post it up to Lab Code Agents because I know the stats were there. It might have not been Harvard. It could have been Stanford. And I'm pretty sure it was Harvard. I'll find it and I'll pin it to Lab Code Agents and then it'll give the stats so you can see. 
But again, going back to everything, the faster you call when somebody comes in or text or email, the better typically. And, and then after that, I would say, put it into where you typically call exactly what Jordan said. If you're calling at a certain time or you're showing up to make calls and follow up, that's what I would do. And lastly, I would put it into that time frame. Um, so excellent role play. Jordan provided some real responses. Interest in love the truth. Thank you, Ruth on Facebook. Perfect. Uh, 56 Rancho Cucamonga. <laughs> the weather. <laughs> That's good. Great way to end it. The way we started it. Absolutely. Anything you want to add here in closing? Any other websites? Any deals? Anything about Z Buyer? Yes. Yeah, so we've always got some special offers coming from anyone through LCA. We love LCA and have been with you guys for quite some time now. Um, so with that, I know Jake's always posting the links in here and it looks like he already has. Um, Jake has got 10% off in here. We're actually going to do 20% today. So anyone coming from LCA, let them know 20% will get you started. Jake, you were faster than I could even talk with that new 20% thing. That's awesome. Um, come through, let them know that you came from this. And then anyone using us currently or jumping into it, um, really evaluate what you're doing. How quick are you calling? Are you calling with the right mindset? Do you have a system in place to track not only your leads performance, but your performance? Are you consistent with what you're doing? And from there, you're on a one path track to success. Dude, great summary, 20%. Just remember when you do sign up, do your best to approach this in a form of saying, hey, this is a long-term process. You're not going to be closing these things fast. For the most part, you'll get one or two here and there Yeah, that'll close fast because we've done it. But for the most part, they take time. The buyer ones, especially. Some other ones, they actually do have urgency. You just have to have the right type of communication with them. So um, I love it. Thanks, guys. We had a lot of people on this one. I appreciate you. Hopefully, if you're in a cold area, the weather gets better for you. If you're in Texas, I know you guys are freezing your butts off. So be careful out there. Other than that, thanks for being on. Jordan, thanks so much, dude. I love seeing the progression of your background, dude. It's I getting more adding, intense. I just keep adding more. I think it's about time to re redo it, though. I, I've been looking maybe some different shelves, maybe something different. You know, I, I want to see something more as far as other than I love Star Wars, but I want to see what else you love other than Star Wars. So I, I loved Marvel and I, I got this thing. And I'll tell you, everyone that's near my office is so tired of this because wash your ears. And this has became like my stress relief through the day. Whenever like I get an email that I'm like, that is not the response I needed. Absolutely. Unacceptable. Boom. Absolutely. <laughs> It has become the best thing I've put in my office. Dude, next time we should use that for when we're scripting. I'm I'm doing it and I'm yeah. doing it. And you're like, no, Tristan, that, that sucks. I'm yeah. Like, oh, crap. It It has been fantastic. I love it. I love it. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye.